Sit down with your spouse and define the priorities you have for your children. Once you're on the right track, run full speed ahead. I'm Dennis Rainey, and that's real family life. together, we talked about a man who said this, all these people who say success changes people, well, no, it just magnifies what's there. And how true is that? We're talking about Kevin Smith. And the last time we were together, Karen, we talked that Kevin had had a massive heart attack. It's one of the things you asked us to pray about in the March newsletter. I'd love to get an update uh, from you on how he's doing. And as I understand it, he had a 100% blockage. She's very lucky to be alive. Yeah, that's, uh, but, that's yeah, unusual. He was going to be dead, which, which is quite something. I wish I knew how that how that shook his heart. I mean, his his spiritual heart. I mean, I know how it shook his physical heart. Physically, right? <laughs> yes, physically, he was he was almost gone. Spiritually, I wish I could tell you I knew. All I know is that I am praying that a, a situation like that does not put him back to life as normal when he's not. He is physically much better. What I want to know is spiritually, did that impact him? Did, when you face death, Adam, what did it do to you? And I'm just praying that the Lord brings him to him and he asks bigger questions and he has different priorities. And that, that's what I want. And when I get any confirmation, I'll let you know. But at this point, that's still a prayer of mine to see what yes. that will be. Kim, I love this. I love this because I believe that God really very much embraces specific prayers, prayers with specificity. So when we talked about Kevin, and we know that he had this massive heart attack, 100% blockage, the first interview he did after the heart attack, he said, and I quote, I know I'm living on borrowed time. Now, I find that to be profoundly important because in truth, there's a person within the sound of our voice who isn't living on borrowed time. Time. It is appointed on the man once yeah. died after that. The judgment. We were guaranteed today. Yeah. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. So are we living some of like we do? Yeah, some this of them is double the same. Right? Eternity is yet to come. And yeah. if we are, where are we going to be spending eternity? So with specificity, you can pray echoing what Karen just said. And if Kevin doesn't yet know the Lord as his personal Savior, coming up to the edge of the grave is an amazing way of making you have to stop and think. The best is yet to come if I made the right choice. So I thank you for that, Karen, very much. Talk to me about some of the prayer work that the Hollywood Prayer Network is doing right now. You walked around the Dolby Theater before the Oscars. I knew that. You're on your website, you have a fabulous video that breaks down some of the big myths for Hollywood. That's intended for us. That's for people outside of Tinseltown who don't pray for the wrong reasons, and you're trying to break down those walls. But talk to me about within the ministry some of the prayer work that's being done. Oh, it is such an exciting time for us. We just did, uh, last weekend, we had a salon with 30 um, top people in the industry, people that are usually, we call them the untouchables, because they don't show up to public events, and they don't go to church, and they don't socialize with a lot of the community. And we brought them together with a fabulous um, fine artist, Bako Fujimura. And yes, yes. That we talked to. Marco talked about how a moment in time can become a movement only through the arts. For instance, he brought up the, the issue of the young people uh, with, with, um, in Washington, D.C. up on the platform talking about the guns. And he said, he watched and said, okay, this is a moment, but I want to see if this becomes a movement. And he said, what makes it a movement is the arts, music, poetry, movies. And he watched someone wrote a song students wrote a song and they performed it. And some of the students came up and they did poetry. And then he saw someone shooting a documentary and he said, that's a movement. And he said, it's the art that create a movement. So we had this conversation that challenged these people who are in the industry, who are creating art, to say there is something bigger and more spiritual about it. And it was fabulous. So we prayed for the people like that. Then on May 3rd, we're having our um, third gathering on the sound stage at CBS. This is called Legacy, an Evening of Story of Prayer. And we are expecting between four and 500 people on the sound stage, all believers in the industry who are celebrating the power of, of stories, the legacy of God through Hollywood.